So in about two and a half hours from now, that summit level meeting will take place, the bilateral summit. The Prime Minister is believed to have added a personal touch to his interactions with world leaders. What will his meeting with Joe Biden be like? There are many questions that are being asked at this point of time. There are a lot of challenges. Now, Joe Biden will be the third US president that Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be interacting with. First Barack Obama, then Donald Trump, and now Joe Biden. Geeta Mohan reports. <laughs> If there's one place Prime Minister Narendra Modi feels at home outside India, it would be the United States. In the seven years he's been the Prime Minister, this is his seventh visit to the country. And over this period, he has interacted with three presidents, Joe Biden, the latest. Indo-US relations under Modi are also about the personal touch he brings to the negotiating table. President Barack Obama, for instance, is friend Barack. A friend to whom he personally served tea. In Donald Trump, Prime Minister Modi found another friend and ally. India carried out surgical strikes in POK after the Uri terror attack and later launched airstrikes on Jaish e Mohammed terror camps deep inside Pakistan in Balakot. The US under Trump stood with New Delhi. There were missteps as well, the biggest letdown being etched out of the peace talks in Afghanistan. The camaraderie, however, was too good to believe. It led Prime Minister Modi to Houston, where he, many felt, openly endorsed Trump for a second term. The words of candidate Trump, Ab ki baar, Trump sarkar. They even took out a victory lap in front of a thrilled diaspora. On many issues, the Biden administration may take a different line from Trump's. If Trump was silent when India abrogated Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir, Biden and his Democrat colleagues during the presidential campaign had criticized the decision much to our discomfort. But much has happened since then. The global economy is shaky after the worst humanitarian crisis since the World War. The Taliban is back in Afghanistan, posing an even bigger terror threat to the world. Pakistan continues its old game of blackmail diplomacy. The Chinese are spreading their influence aggressively. The world is no more unipolar. There are fears of another Cold War. We're not seeking, say it again, we are not seeking a new Cold War or a world divided into rigid blocks. The United States is ready to work with any nation that steps up and pursues peaceful resolution to shared challenges even if we have intense disagreements in other areas. Day two is going to be about the big Quad in-person summit meeting between and among the Quad leaders and the bilateral between President Biden and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, where the focus is going to be Afghanistan, counter China, resilient supply chains, as also post-COVID recovery and economic cooperation. With Vidhi Chirinus, you came to sing in Washington, D.C. Geeta Mohan for India Today. I have Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, a well-respected former diplomat, joining me on the broadcast. I have Sri Ram Cholia, a world affairs analyst and professor and dean at the Jindal School of International Affairs, joining me on the broadcast. Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, you saw the meeting between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Vice President, Kamala Harris. Is that an indication of what the summit meeting could be like? Oh, uh, good evening. And I have no doubt about the fact that the meeting between the president and the prime minister would be cordial and warm in keeping with the quality of the relationship. You know, we always tie ourselves up in, the, in knots and say, oh, this or oh, that. At the end of the day, there is a huge convergence of interests. At the end of the day, we have 21 years of 
a close cooperation where the relationship has been transformed and we are essentially demo we are why essentially we are big democracies major democracies with a large indian diaspora the commonality of interests are huge now in any relationship there are going to be some some wrinkles so let uh, the wrinkles will be sorted out but i have no doubt that will be a very good meeting it will be a warm meeting it will be a forward looking meeting and it will be a substantive meeting okay shri ram cholia some argue that even if the united states raises issues that may be uncomfortable in any relationship there could be two partners who don't see eye to eye on every issue and we shouldn't be rattled is that your appreciation what do you make of this first bilateral in person between prime minister narendra modi and joe biden yes gaurav i think uh, i mean kamala harris uh, raised a bit of those hackles uh, when she talked about how both our countries need to fix uh, uh, problems with our democracies at home you know there is this whole liberal uh, rhetoric in the us that somehow democracy in india is in danger so i mean she was alluding to that but that's okay i mean uh, you, like we say when there is a major strategic partnership so there is, we agree to disagree on some points but look for what is common and uh, try to extend the shared the zone of shared interests and there you know it's massive so this um, bilateral uh, apart from uh, the issue of the you know personal bonding i'm sure prime minister is going to find a way to uh, get to uh, biden's uh, heart and mind like he has done with every uh, one of his predecessors he has worked with but apart from that i think uh, the convergence is quite clear in the indo pacific uh, the global balance of power uh, hinges upon india us cooperation and uh, you know it's not uh, an exaggeration to say that we are almost like uh, de facto allies of course we don't uh, do formal alliances uh, with okay. any country because of our concerns about strategic autonomy but so i think we are going to work to counterbalance china number one no there's no question about it we are going to work uh, on counter terrorism i'll come uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come to the issue of quad and aukus and china in just a moment but on bilateral issues on bilateral issues ambassador vishnu prakash where do you see the relationship move because i believe covid is something that both countries are are very keen to move forward on but india has a a, a lot of issues to take up with the united states especially on vaccine so do you see forward movement there again i do not have any doubt uh, there there were glitches uh, initially the us took a position which was not the best position some statements were made uh, which were a little awkward but then us is one of the rare big powers which believes in making course corrections they made a course correction and the very fact that the components and the supply chain of the components should be smooth has been driven home again and again now uh, in quad we are committed to produce 1 billion units of vaccine we have already said that we will start supplying vaccine again so the world has seen india's track record and india has seen how the world respected and reacted to despite the initial glitches india's requirements so again i there could be some delay here there could be a niggle there but i have again no doubt i am very clear in my mind that uh, we will have will smoothen out things and india is progressively ramping up its production capacities and we will again become the pharmacy of the world uh, that we are so proud of and be, uh, be able to provide quality vaccine at very competitive prices to the world okay. and in cooperation with quad countries and particularly the us you know one quick reaction from both of you before i come to that uh, big issue of quad um, there are some who say that you know the prime minister opened his heart and he was so uh, warm towards kamala harris uh, the us vice president when he spoke of her victory and her victory yatra and asking her to come to india and her and and her bond with india uh, and and all of that and also the fact that he said ki badi aatmiyata se baat hui jab june mein bharat ko uh, madad ki avashyakta thi you know uh, she was very warm uh, and and understanding when india spoke to her uh, uh, during the second wave some say that india was so warm was the reaction the same or was that lukewarm in your appreciation dr cholia 
Well, I think Prime Minister knows how to do a charm offensive. Uh, he's an expert in uh, disarming, uh, you know, and winning over uh, people who may have formerly been critical of India. And, you know, he believes in expanding the circle of friends. So I think uh, he's uh, done the right thing, hit the right notes with Kamala Harris. And, uh, you know, there is a faction of the left wing of the Democratic Party in the U.S., which has been misinformed and misguided about uh, India's rise. So I think he's trying to correct all those. I'm sure they've discussed these uh, in the uh, off-camera uh, meeting as well. And uh, I think um, to an extent, you see already that uh, Biden administration, all the fears that were expressed initially when Biden won the election last November was that, you know, these uh, liberals are going to, uh, you know, pounce on India and attack us over human rights and democracy. Nothing like that has happened because they've realized that, you know, they cannot afford to antagonize a rising power like India. So I think Prime Minister is going there with that kind of confidence. I mean, of course, we can't do it alone. We don't believe in unilateral action, yes. uh, be it in uh, counterbalancing China or stopping terror from uh, the AFPAC region. We want cooperation, but at the same time, we are not to be, uh, you know, talked down. And I think that's been always a hallmark mark of Modi's diplomacy and they have realized over time that he's a tough nut to crack so none of this is going to work you know what they, what will really work for the US is to appreciate the full value of India to give us more concessions to enable us to rise to become stronger militarily economically and geopolitically and that's ultimately what the US's contribution to saving itself and its crown from the Chinese takeover because if it that's enables the India big to point get food, I'm coming then they to have balance. absolutely and who better than uh, you know ambassador Vishnu Prakash and professor Sri Ram Cholia to talk about the quad, the threat, and also the fact that China appears a little unnerved. China says India's on the BRICS bandwagon and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization on one side and quad on the second. Can both happen simultaneously? Now, before I come to this question, take a look at this report. Exclusive club of four of the world's top leaders. For the first time, all the Quad leaders sitting across the table. President Biden, Prime Minister Modi, the Australian and Japanese premiers meet on Friday to brainstorm on global and regional issues. <laughs> 